Right, I've done the staining outside. What are these things? What am I doing without my glasses on? Hang on. Is that big? Are those pansies? Holy cow! I've got my readers on. They look like triffids. I thought, what the hell have I bought? I think I'll put these away and put the real glasses on. God, all this self-isolation's not doing me any good. Hang on a minute, guys. Oh, start again. I just walked out the house with my reading glasses on. Right, exercise. Jobs. Onwards and upwards in the lockdown. A little bit of bleach in the bottom of a bait bucket. Now, I could use an ordinary bucket, but using a bait bucket makes me think I could possibly be fishing. So I'm using a green one, and as we all know, if you're using any form of bucket, you must use green just so the fish in the commercial waters don't know you're coming. Yawn. Add water. Now I'm using toilet bleach here. You guys use what you want. This is just my way of doing it. This is to remove out on the front of my gates. I'm going to do both sides. On the outside I've got green mould because it's been such a wet winter. I'm going to bleach this down. Not only don't need to clean the gates and eat off the gates, do I? But it does kill the green mould and then I can stain. In fact, I wanted a stain. That's a lie. I can't get to b and Q's. <gasps> Oh my God, I've said the word, that's an advert. I can't get to the DIY store because they do click and collect. It takes five days, blah, blah, blah. They're out of stock. And guess what? Paint and varnish do not come under the category of essentials. Uh, so it means I can't finish it. So I'm going to bleach them anyway for ready when I can get out. And I'm going to stain the inside. But I'll show you first what I do. I put on the wife's gloves here. Okay. Oh yes, these are the wife's gloves. Two left-handed ones, for God's sake. Back to the garage. Try again this time with a right-handed one and left-handed one. Covered in paint, so you know they're probably ones I've been using. Don't need the bleach anymore. I'll get myself a rag. Don't splash bleach like I do all over your trousers, because it will send white specks on all over the clothes. Now you can see down here, I've done this before. In bleach, all this green mould, if you stain over that, put your stain over that, it won't actually take properly, it will still show through a bit. So that's on just regular panel fencing. Right, here you can see the green stain, there. The mould all over it. Now I haven't got enough stain to do the gates. You know, I haven't got those. It's, it's pretty bad there. Right. Be careful with this, it's bleach water. I'm not saying use it, I'm just showing you what I do my way. I can't tell you how much bleach you put in there. You just need to squeeze most of it out. Do not flick it on your clothes, in your face. And the inside, I've got, I think I've got enough stain inside. You see, it's washing it all off. But more important, it does seem to kill it. Well, I know it does. It cleans it so well, you think, why do I need to stain it? And of course, obviously with all wood, you do need to protect it, keep a surface over there. It doesn't take long before it uh, starts to rot, so I don't need yet more expense in this god-awful world we're in at the moment. God, it's driving me mad. It's like there's no hope at the moment. I can't even get DIY, that's really terrible. Nearly as bad as not being able to go fishing, guys, is not being able to get to the DIY stores and get what I call boys toys. So just do about three sections, rinse it out. You don't want it flicking in your face or anywhere. You can actually probably see where I've gone. Probably do two panels, see me bending up and down quite so much. All the way along. And you can see most of the red, that's red. What is he smoking this morning? Most of the green mould is down there. If there's red mould, it must be red tied. There we go. Well, I've done these gates so they can uh, they can be drying off. The other thing, if you start at the top, it will run down. We had such a wet winter. I'm taking it all out on this green mould. Or algae. I think this is bad. You want to see my fish ponds? We'll go and have a look at them in a minute. 
never thought you'd see a, a grown man wear marigolds. I'll tell you what, I bet this bleach kills that coronavirus. I might fancy gargling with it though. Oh, you can see where I've uh, soaked it all there. Now, I did this bit earlier on, didn't I? Just here, look. And as you soak it, it looks like it disappears, but then it comes back through, doesn't it, you see? Look, I've done all this, where that dark area is, it goes, but look here, I've done all that. It's still there. I don't think that's gonna be there in the morning. Here's the ironic thing. Postman came. Oh, that's another bad luck thing, look. That's another bad luck thing, oh my God. That old antique horseshoe, when we moved in, should be up there, like that. That's it, that's gonna save everything now. Postman came here, puts a post, I put the post down there, no problem. Puts a post down there, I'll take my glove off and I touch it and take the post in. Not good, is it? What we do is anti-back everything. All right, let's do the inside. So, fence posts done, as you can see, has sealed them up pretty well. I'm just going to uh, sand the work for this now. Get the flaky bits off. This is, this is the side that the actual weather hits being prevailing southwesterly. Right, it's a little flaky bit left. I'll rub it down as best I can. What I suggest doing when you do that, make sure there is no dust around. You should wear a dust mask if you're all into that sort of thing. I can't because my glasses steam up and I then see nothing. Get rid of all the cobwebs and then this is ready for a coat of stain. See, it sort of goes on like milk and leaves loads of brush strokes. I'll show you. It's horrible stuff to use, but it does seem to sort of set up all right. It feels like I'm putting it on too thin. I can hear Colin the kite in the background. I'll whistle him up. I'll probably be inundated with pterodactyls. I try and get the best finish you can, but it is tough. And of course it's got that sort of tendency of might run. Haven't exactly got a lot left in there, so I've just got to do what I can do. Well, I've been in, uh, had some lunch, you can see the difference between the side I've done, hopefully, and the side I haven't done. I've moved back, you can see, stained here, not stained there. But if you do go for lunch, it's quick drying, so wash your brush out first, otherwise you'll come back to a concrete brush. I also use a bench, and that way I don't have to bend down for the t for the first half anyway, I can just stand there and put it on. I'm going to be so furious when I run out of this. Right, got the old garden seat here for a bit of repair. And I've been rubbing it down. It's been in there for a while, so it's dried out. It's, lit. it's one that uh, somebody left us. Not wanting to throw anything away, you see it's eaten away there. I've been out for about five years now. Being outside, obviously it was a good expensive one to buy initially, but see these pegs? Look, these are these are rotting out. There's a spider. These are rotting out. So what happens is this I can't show it to you properly, I don't think. Hey, you can just see it moving. It slots here that way, and this peg, put it in the wrong way if you like. As that goes in, pinches between here and there and locks it up tight. So there's a bit of movement there. I'm going to be making some more pegs, removing the rotten ones. And uh, rub this down. Really coarse one. This is off a belt, a big belt sander. It's about 30 years old. It says, looks like aluminium cloth or something. Don't know what number grit it is. 57, is that? Who knows? Sounds like beans. Well, it's 57. Used to get it from the furniture factories I used to buy my furniture from. And leftover used for their furniture, so it's ideal. I've knocked all the old varnish off. I've dried it all off. Or stain. And that's ready for varnish. You can give it one coat. And I'm going to make some pegs for the other side. I do not want to buy another one. I could personally, I could go out and buy another one. I could buy 10 of these tomorrow. I don't want to. I want to make this last a little bit longer. 
you can see here the peg's gone completely so let's get this sorted out another fantastic project at the totally awesome workshop right I've finished the gates I've got a little bit left here stain oh I sit down I think I might be able to at least get something on here a bit of colouring and I'm going to make those wedges to go on the end to support these actual seats here I'm only going to do the seat I've got a feeling I won't have enough to cover the whole thing it's going to seal some of it up which will make it last a bit longer hopefully well I'm scraping the bottom the very bottom of the timber it looks like I might get lucky stretch it as far as I can and hopefully make this this old bench last a good bit longer right let's make I've taken one of the pegs out here you see that I don't really want that knot in it I'm only using regular well guess what folks pallet wood I'm just going to measure it slightly oversize because if I do two at once I can get a couple of cuts out of this I can always I can always sand them back can't I, I can always sand them back and I'll just reverse them so I might get three out of one if that makes sense now that's it that one's not great is it that's okay see if I can get three out of there I might I could use a jigsaw one that I think might be favourite. Here yeah, boy, here yeah, boy, here you come. Come and play. You're coming out now. Um, I haven't played with you for a long time. Come along. The saw. The saw. Here we go. Come with me. Let's put the old ear defenders on. See what we can do. I might just shave the end off of this a little bit. Just the edges there. Might be fine to do that there, Graham, because this is a very sharp knife. I better test this one first. Ideally, we'd use a wooden mallet so it's not so fierce. But now I'm going to check this side first because it's going to pinch that way. That's already been split that side, guys. Let's tighten that up. Can you see that one move? one's had it okay now I think the flat side would go this way Let's have that. not quite I've got to shave off one side I'm wondering if I could just gently be about right go and check it see if we've got the right size there we go
make it a little bit shorter. And let's see if that one's going to pinch up enough. I'm putting the straight edge there and the taper is this side, so the taper is going to push it out. Solid boys. So, one, two, three, four, five are okay there. Three gaps here. Again, that one split. I need another three. Okay, here we go. Almost cut to size, just tap them down. Please go in. Again, that one's been split. If you hit them too hard, it's just going to burst this apart. Oh, it's way tighter, way tighter. Of course, I've got just enough stain for those pegs. Beautiful, just about enough dregs at the bottom of the can. But by doing these jobs, this is renovated. I'm going to give it another coat of proper varnish on top of that. And you wouldn't know the difference. It will last, I feel sure. It was a good quality one. Whoever, whoever bought it, it was a good quality one to start with, and that makes a huge difference in the sort of renovation factor. There we go. Yet another empty can due to the lockdown. I'm getting through my entire stock of paint is going down, stains are going down, wood stains going down, everything's going down. Must wash the brush out. Okay, next job. Ah oh, yes. I've already stained the table, rubbed it down and stained it, but I'm going to give that a coat of whatever I can find. I thought I'd put a tin out here somewhere. I'm rapidly running out of stuff, guys. Look at this, like a bombsite, and you can tell there's nothing else to do. Colour varnish, gloss, oak, that'll do me. Different brush though. This is too soft. I need a slightly stiffer brush. Always give it a good shake. The can. And I tend to try and open it first, just to check I can feel that's loose. But if there is a, if you do have something with a skin on it, okay, we all get it. What the hell is that? Quick drying green? Oh, it says it's oak. Um, if you do get a skin, just get an old flat knife and you can saw around the edge, get a pair of pliers, lift the skin out, wipe it on the side, put it in the bin. Smith, I had a brush here, mate. I don't know where that's gone. Okay, next job. I've never known blanket weed this early in the year, but you can see it's horrible, horrible stuff. And when it bubbles like this, it goes foamy. I don't know if you can see that. Look at it. It's just literally fibrous, yucky stuff. So I'm going to get my net and get as much of that out as I can. And there's going to be a lot of it. It's the closest thing to fishing I think I'm going to get for months and months. All right, let's get the net out. This is an old friend I thought I would never get using again. See, there could be frogs in a minute, springtime, and they're not going to like all this bloody blanket weed everywhere. There might even be something of interest in here with some creatures we can discover. A bit like, oh god, there's tons of it. I don't feel there's going to be much living in this.
guys. I think I'm going to go over the far bank there. I like there's more specimens over there. Mostly blanket weed. I don't feel I'm going to get to the good stuff, to the good bits, until I get rid of all this blanket weed, which you can see sort of nothing lives in it. No creepy crawlies, no insects. Nothing. Wow. It's got to come out, though. Well, we had our first success, boys. It's in there somewhere. I saw something hopping and bobbing around. Got one. A newt. These things actually squeak. And the colour of it is pretty underneath, which you won't waste. Oh, I've got orange. But I have actually heard them sort of squeak. So there are newts in there, people. There are indeed newts. I'll drop him in here. One nil. Three to go. Oh, I'm up for it now. That includes... This competition includes any creature whatsoever that moves. If I could count eggs. Frog spawn and stuff like that. Come on, I'm just, oh yes, all I need to do is go in. Wouldn't that be a laugh? Oh my God, that'd be a YouTube viral. Man falls in while netting newts. That's why they call it blanket weed, because it is an absolute blanket. We're going to get some out of this one because there's some leaves in the bottom of that. Well, I saw a beetly thing in this one. Sure, I see some up wiggling around. I see there's leaves in there, loads of dead leaves. There's a newt. Two newts, three newts. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Three newts. They like those dead leaves, people. I'm going to get a bucket. This is like the kids going for crabs. Right, bucket. Oh, he's gone. All right, put the camera down, Graham. Put the camera down. Put it on the towel. Let's have another scoop, because there was definitely some weird beetle type of creature there. Blanket, we hate it. All fishermen know it's a nightmare, especially in the summer. Generally, sunlight induced, I feel, clear water sunlight. Getting all excited now. Let's see what we can find. Oh, it's like that. Oh! I've been trying to sort of suss this venue out. It's quite tricky, and I think I'm going to have to go down the margins. You know, I like a bit of margin fishing, no question. I'm wondering, because the blanket weed's gone from there, and I've moved it, have any of the unusual specimens gone into that area, sort of stirred up and feeding? I don't know. I'm going to try a few scoops along the bottom. My hunch is there could be stuff where the blanket weed's gone. Of course, as you know, with margin fishing, I should have a green bivvy. I should have if everything should be green because you're fishing in close. I'm hoping to go in stealthy, footfalls very light, and try and keep my silhouette off the side of the skyline. Don't worry guys, I'm just going to put this on the mat. Oh, different species. What the hell is that? I don't even know if I want to touch that thing. Some sort of beetly thing. Oh, come out. He buried himself. Where's he gone? I've lost him. Oh, oh what's that? Oh, it's horrible. Oh, it's all hard. Ah, oh, what a twit. It's a piece of concrete out the side of the pool. It really made me jump. 
No, margin fishing didn't do it, boys. You know, it's like when you're carp fishing. There's nothing better than going on one side of the lake and casting two miles to the other. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the trouble, it's never been thought of before, to walk round and drop my net in close. You know what's in this one? That's right, more blanket weed. Well, I've got the wife's best Pyrex dish here, so don't tell her I've got it, will you? I'm just going to fill it up with water, like this. Now then, kiddies, this could be interesting. Don't fall over with it, Graham. She'll kill you if you break that one. That's her best one. Probably belong to her great grandmother or something. Well, I don't think they invented Pyrex by then. Now, let's have a look and see what we can collect. Rummage around, see where the creatures are. Oh look, I couldn't do that if I wanted to. Oh, there's one. I'm gonna put them in there, boys. And you can, kids, I can, I can zoom in with my other camera. Was that one? That's a giant one. Oh my God, that's a PB. That is a PB new. Look at the size of that one. Then what I do, some people say, is there anything left in there? I put all these leaves. Well, there's no shortage of newts in there, people. In my other pond. Well, I haven't enjoyed myself so much since I had a tax refund. 83 years ago. Anyway, I've had a real good session. The bailiff hasn't come round for a ticket, so that's good. I have got my license and my pond license. The fire bank's a little bit snaggy. There's some lilies in there. I got uh, snagged up a couple of times in the lilies. The new situation is unbelievable. Once I get the blanket weed out and they get in the um, oak leaves and that in the bottom, they're everywhere. I've got so many, I think I have at least got my four species. I may have five, because I don't know, but I've got to release the newts in my other pond over there before the bailiff comes round. And um, then I'll go through and show you what the other smaller species are, but we'll take a look at them anyway. I think you'll agree, there's a hell of a lot in there. I've no idea on the species, there's some light ones, some dark ones, big ones, small ones. I don't know if you guys can see them. There must be somewhere. We know, we know there's going to be a new expert out there somewhere. Can tell us. Maybe the kids, when they do school projects, they might know which one's which. What I'm going to do is go in the house, get another one of the wife's dishes, because this is mudded up a bit now, and see if we can't put them in one at a time so you can see them.
wow people I've actually enjoyed myself for about an hour and a half messing around there it's really close to fishing but the thing is I've got to get these returned and washed up because I think I forgot tonight she probably wants to do I think it's shepherd's pie ladies I think that's a shepherd's pie dish I'm not sure so gonna be a bit of a crunchy shepherd's pie with uh, water beetles in it and little bits you go mm, what's that Ooh, twang a leech I better get them washed up quick good fun though